This is Dusty Podcast, episode two. You know how we roll now, uh, straight in. Today's topic is going to be the role of the fullback. I uh, know I want to talk about it. I apparently used to be a fullback back in school. Well, no, what actually happened was, similar to a lot of the rest of them, I got relegated to fullback, tried to be a winger, didn't work out. Watch this, yeah? Fullback is the role of the failed winger most of the time. It's true, because they've got a lot of the psychologies. You get me? They've got the brain anatomy of a flipping winger, but they can't shoot or make the right decision. Some of them can only cross and have got great link-up play. It's very different. So the manager was like, you know what? You might as well just flip in. Sit back, bruv. Just stay back. Don't even... Don't even flip it. You know, you know, there's different types of fullbacks. We're going to cover all of that today. But um, I want to just quickly tell you what happened with me. I remember, you know, like, if you're having your first football match, yeah, for school, this is what happened to me. You get you get these nerves because it's like, oh, my days, I'm about to have to go out there and perform. I need to go and perform in front of an audience. This is probably the first time I've, I've done that in terms of football. And I didn't know my ability check. You know, it's not like you can do a little... Um, internet speed test so you can see where you're at you know what i'm saying you can't really do that with the with the football at you know you, you really can but i just didn't know so i was going out there pretty much naked just me and me and that 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 ball <laughs> so that was but listen it, it didn't work out ultimately and i got spun i got spun it was so bad the manager used me as a sub yeah i came on for about 30 seconds I had a one-on-one. -on -one. I was hyping up to the man them how good my defending is, yeah. And then I got flipping roasted, man. I got roasted. And then he, and then he subbed me off. Hey, that's the only footballing experience that I've got, I swear, in terms of playing an actual school match. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. So, yeah, I've always got a... Not a soft spot. What's the opposite of a soft spot? Um, I'm always pissed off with fullbacks right now. Because of what happened to me in my past. But yeah, so in terms of football manager, we've got a couple different roles that you can choose from. And this is why I couldn't really, in my first opening monologue, talk about all of them because they're quite different. Some of them are failed wingers and then some of them are failed bouncers. For example, no nonsense fullback is someone that is clearly pissed off with life and just wants to take it out on wingers. He just wants to break wingers' ankles. It's the truth. Can you tell me I'm lying? It's the truth. Um, no nonsense fullback. We'll talk about that first. The no nonsense fullback knows his strengths and weaknesses and focuses predominantly on his defensive duties. In other words, he doesn't just see red. He he only sees red and wants to assassinate someone on the pitch. That's pretty much what they're saying. Um, scarcely going forward into a more attacking role. I think that's his... He's showing you, you know remorse he doesn't want to expose his lack of technical ability because a lot of them can't control dribble pass a lot of them don't have football fundamentals they can only win the ball so by him not wanting to go forward it is genuinely a blessing in disguise you have to just appreciate the little wins in life and you know it's the it's the little things that make life what it is and the fact that no nonsense fullbacks don't go forward it's a blessing we don't want to see that bruv we don't want to see Wan-Bissaka bombing forward, but he has to do it. It's part of his contract. <laughs> hey, bruv. Who likes watching that, bro? I'm going to pull his stats up on my screen right now. Watch this, yeah. Aaron wan 20 tackling. 20 tackling. It's incredible. He's he's a menace. They they were comparing him to Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan with the, with the kicks. The slide tackling. He's one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders on the planet, yeah. But nobody, no one, not one Manchester United fan paid their season ticket to see him bombing forward. If you think I'm lying, ask them. Ask them what it looks like. It looks like a tree is getting blown in the wind that's also having a heart attack. That's what it looks like. It's very unpleasant on the eyeballs. So we're going to... Hey, watch this. He, Someone like wan doesn't even have positioning or off the ball, but he's a no-nonsense fullback because you just tell him, listen, anybody that you see, I need you to turn yourself into the incinerator you need to just burn them alive just annihilate them and that's what he, that's probably what you might end up doing it all depends because you don't even know what's going to happen he's very unpredictable um that's a brilliant example of a no-nonsense fullback 18 bravery as well 
18 out of 20 is like one of the best in the game. And physically, he's not too bad as well in terms of speed. So he might be able to keep up with a winger. But um, as I specified on the ball, the guy's got like, what, six, he's got six vision. Come on, come on. With, with vision, you're meant to open, you're meant to see a potential opening or see something that a player might not have seen. You see, like if the brainer, they say people like Meza Ozil, the brainer, those kind of players can see things that other people can't see. Or Aaron, Aaron Wan-Bissaka can't even open his eyes, bruv, let alone see things that other people can't see. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why Nonotz's fullbacks are very... I think it might be systematic. It might, it might have to be systematic. You can't always use them, in my opinion. Um, unless you're trying to, you know, sit back. If you're winning like 2-1, you're trying to hold on to a lead. You just turn your normal fullback into a no-nonsense. Just get rid of the ball. So yeah, that's what I would really say with no nonsense. The next role that I would like to discuss with you is the inverted fullback. And I say it again because I made that mistake myself because I just don't care enough to read things enough and it's a terrible trait of mine. I just jumped straight in and I just didn't have what it took to swim so I drowned. What I did was in the search for an inverted wingback, I clicked the wrong button. So yes, there's two. You've got an inverted fullback and you've got an inverted wingback. We're talking about the inverted fullback first. And the example of player that I'm giving you is Ben White. I know, because stat-wise, I used to diss this guy. And I'll be honest, he looks flipping incredible in this game. So I have to talk about him. Big up the Arsenal man then. I'll give you a lot of your shout-out. Fair enough, you've got a flipping incredible, incredible inverted fullback on your hands. So... What is, what is an inverted fullback? Well, exactly. Let me explain. An inverted fullback is a much more defensive version of an inverted wingback. There you go. That, I could literally leave it there, but obviously I'm going to elaborate. These are the mother chuckers that when you're hitting a team on the break and you're trying to target their fullbacks and they're not there and you're confused, you're thinking, where the flip is their fullbacks gone? And then they've turned into centre-backs doing the little shape-shifting thing. He went from an iPhone to a pop-top in terms of he's not what he used to be he's a center back now that's pretty much what an inverted fullback is that's why someone like ben white would play there or another example kyle walker in real life sometimes you see him bombing forward and then sometimes you see him joining the center back creating a back three and that's what it does that's what an inverted fullback is they're not going to go into the midfield like an inverted wing back will they're going to instead try and join the center back partnership providing more stability as to why if you're getting countered it will help you a lot more to have an extra centre back so I'm like where's he gone we're looking for the winger where, I mean no 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 we're looking for the full back where is he where the flip did he go and then and he's a flipping centre back he's got his buddies with him protecting him we can't beef him anymore he's standing next to Van Dyke. what am I going to do I'm just going to have to stand there and watch bruv I can't do anything now that's what it's like it's it's an, it's an incredible role and don't be like me read your roles if you're going to take anything from this video because it is all my opinion yeah but i i just have to tell you listen read your roles bruv i'm telling you flipping incredible i i can't believe i did that i was thinking why the hell is my wing back not in the midfield bruv why is he playing center back i must i must be doing something wrong i was i was oh hold your horses so we're gonna have to go back in time real quick just so I can specify something. We're going back in time like Doctor Who. Watch this, yeah. So, the no-nonsense fullback I forgot to mention only comes with the defend duty. It only comes with defend. And you can't blame that. That's quite self-explanatory. You're not meant to attack as a no-nonsense. That's fair enough. But also, the inverted fullback also comes with only the defend duty. So, they can't go forward even if they wanted to. You're strictly prohibited from crossing that far, uh, halfway line. <laughs> You're not allowed, bruv. Uh, otherwise, we, we sub them off for disobeying the rules. The inverted wingback. That's probably one of the most popular roles, if I had to guess, in the new football managers. It's probably up there because it's new, firstly, but it's also extremely effective because it doesn't just come with the inverted wingback by itself. No, you get buy one, get four free. It comes with four flipping duties. It comes with four duties. You can have it on defend. You can have it on support, attack, or automatic for guys like me that 
just can't be bothered sometimes just let him do what he wants it depends on your on your system but listen inverted wing back on the fan we'll start we'll start with that one yeah so it's like you're going from the body shape of dj khaled to the body shape of prime arnold schwarzenegger you're definitely shape shifting um it's definitely not the same you go from a right back who will only bomb forward if there's no one in front of him so let's say your right winger is an inverted right winger and he's cut inside that's the only time he will come out of his little eggshell and try and go forward the little pussy and then if there's someone that's no wait sorry if the flipping right winger is there then he'll just cut inside <laughs> it's that simple but as the defend duty he's gonna cut inside as a dm he's gonna cut inside as a dm so i recommend you have a lot of composure for the inverted wing back on the fence because I'm looking at the diagram right now not a diagram a little animation he's cutting inside to the DM providing midfield depth for the deep midfield so let's say ah oh, once again I have to use Ben White as an example because he's got a lot of composure Ben White's got 16 composure so it would suit him if you had one Bissaka trying to do this you're better off getting your cow milking it bringing the milk splashing it on the floor that's the amount of uh, use that you have if you put one Bissaka there still so yeah um, play your cards right don't put someone that hasn't got composure or footballing ability to cut inside into the midfield it's not going to look good it's not going to look good it will actually really hurt your eyes so yeah I'm just warning you you know like if you was to look directly into the sun people advise you you don't do that you might you know end up blinding yourself that's why it might happen the inverted wing back on support duty that is the king of unoriginality. He will only play depending on the system around him. He's not too defensive and he's not too attacking. Similar to the flipping Goldilocks and the Free Bears. He's bang in the middle. Bang in the middle, bruv. Um, he's definitely for the guys that play a bit more cautious, that don't know really the direction they're trying to go. Um, if you don't want to go two guns blazing, bombing forward or too defensive, then support is perfect. And now I can specify that when there's fewer than two defensive midfielders, he's going to try and drift into the space and create more space for players around him. And also when there's a winger ahead of him. So that's two now. And yeah, you obviously, with the supporting role, you're going to need the art of both, the art of fire and water. You just need the best of both worlds, man. You need to be adaptable in the defensive duties and then you need to be pleasant on the eyes going forward. That's all we need. And then the support role is pan, it's beautiful. From there, it's, it's, it's delicious. <laughs> Inverted wing back on attack roll. So now, this is where I can say this beautiful quote. War is based on deception. And that is war, W-A-R. Based on deception, what does that mean? Well, a lot of the time, you might think something is happening on the other side that isn't quite what is going on it's probably what isn't happening i don't know how to word it but it's a lot of baloney going out there i'm just gonna tell you the facts yeah we've got an inverted wing back who you on the naked eye it might look like a normal wing back to you but in reality that is a jack in the box ready to pop out and attack bruv i'm telling you he cuts inside drifts inside from the flank like a winger so you see joao cancelo is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. That guy is probably a failed winger, but one of the most successful failed wingers. It's true because he's got all of the stats to bomb forward, cut inside, and then he whips it like an actual winger. These are for the guys that have got the dribbling. I don't think it's necessary to have dribbling for any of the other inverted wing, wing back roles, but for the one on attack, they say that he goes forward adventurously. This guy's moving like Indiana Jones on the pitch. Just anything that he sees is getting burned. He's just going to start slicing everything. And with that ball, he's... I mean, you have to be at a certain technical level to play the inverted wing back on attack roll. It's all the element of surprise. This is how wing backs get away with having low positioning and high off the ball. Because they're wing backs. They're not full backs. They're not defenders. They're wingers in disguise. It's beautiful. This is like, imagine you've got a granny. Someone's granny is holding a newspaper and then they accidentally drop it on the floor. They ask you to pick it up because uh, the, back is, the back is sore, back pains. And then as you go to pick it up, uh, it blows up. And then she takes all of your schnitt. 
<laughs> she blew she blew you up and she looted you. That's the element of surprise. <laughs> inverted wing back on automatic. Unlike the inverted wing back on support. The inverted wing back on support relies on the system around him, but the inverted wing back on automatic relies on the mentality. So with the mentality, you've got positive, you've got attacking, very attacking, cautious, balanced. Very defensive, defensive. It all depends on what you're doing in terms of what he does. So this is where you get someone that at any moment can either play a bit deeper, can go guns blazing, can be a bit pragmatic if they need to be in terms of being supporting. And for the example that I'm going to give you, it's, it's a rare one, but I have to say Jose Gaia. I believe someone like Jose Gaia, who's got the stats of an angel i'm not even joking he's he's pretty much perfect in this game when i read his stats he's got crossing ability of 14 tackling ability of 14 positional ability of 14 off the ball of 16 decision making of 16 composure of 14 pace acceleration and agility of 16 the guy is he's perfect one of the few players in this game that is perfect still Arguably one of the best left backs in the game. And yeah, he is someone that you're meant to put on automatic. The guy is literally the Justice League in a bottle. All by himself, <laughs> I swear. Complete wing back only has support and attack duties. So I hope you've got your afternoons free because you're going to have to be dealing with a lot of police interrogations because you're going to be getting done for harassment a lot of the time. These wing backs that you're playing up against and the defenders they're gonna complain to the police they won't stop attacking me i feel friend i feel friend it's in the description of the complete wing back the first line is that he loves to attack that is some crazy psychopathic schnit right there bruv i'm telling you he sounds like joker from batman he's just a maniac that's what they are um he doesn't really care about defending but he can still do it that's what it actually said it mentions that as well and that's specifically with the support duty it mentions that only for the support duty does he even try to provide balance defensively does he even try to pour water on the raging fire that is his attack with that being said i can only look at the support and attack duties for complete wing back as two blood curdling twin tigers but one being a little bit more level-headed than the other. That's it. But there's still two maniacs. The complete wingback on attack is a limitless, boundless option that you can choose from where he will do anything in his power just to impact the game in an offensive way. If it means that he has to take the walking stick off an elderly man just to score a goal, he's going to not take it. He's going to snatch it forever. Just to bang it in, just to try and get an assist. He'll do anything. He'll go as far as learning a new language solely to argue with referees, telling them how much he's going to hunt his family down because he just ruled his goal offside. For my player example, I'm going to give you Van der Sun, someone that I have used in the past with the mighty Benfica, obviously. And he's incredible. He's not the best defensively in terms of his positioning, 10 positioning, but he's got 13 tackling for if he did a complete wing back on support, he might be able to just about provide some sort of balance. But going forward, 14 dribbling, 15 crossing, that's that's his bag. You better get him on that ball because yeah, you could change the game for you. Out of all of the wide defenders, I imagine fullback is the most traditional one. I started playing in Football Manager 18 and I remember fullback being there. Not all of these roles were there. So fullback, I imagine, stands the test of time. Now, I said that there's failed wingers that play as wingbacks, but I believe failed centre-backs play as fullbacks. You meant that it didn't quite work out for you at centre-back because you was too small or you was too tiny or too minuscule. <laughs> yeah, no. For the guys that it didn't quite work out for, they probably got turned to fullbacks. And then they got great careers out of it. I wouldn't be surprised. Fullback defend suits someone like a Josco Vadio, who, let's be honest, is most definitely not blessed in the art of crossing that ball because it is an art. It's a skill and he just doesn't have it. But what he does have is composure for simple short range passing. That's what a fullback defender will do on the ball. Obviously, you're going to get your defending duties. He's not really going to bomb forward 
leaving the space vacant. He's going to stay there most of the time as to why you're going to need good positioning so you know where to be, good strength as well. But I believe with the tackling, positioning and passing, composure, that's pretty much all you need. Obviously, decision-making as well. But it's a nice way to play out from the back without having to do too much. Fullback defend duty. It's very relaxed. It's easy work. Fullback on support is similar to the defend, but with less restrictions. Very simple. Instead of just playing normal short passes, the safe option, he takes a little bit more risks. He plays through balls now and actually wants to cross the ball. So that's why I would recommend someone like Javi Galan, who can defend, but has got incredible crossing, like 16 crossing. And since they only cross or play through balls when the opportunity arises, he's not too reckless. It's another more composed role. He's going to be a lot more selective with his crossing. It even mentions that he supplements his defensive responsibilities. So I'm going to give you that saying again. Oh, he went to get milk and he never came back. Yeah, that's what he does with his defensive abilities. He just doesn't. Well, he does. He actually does, but not as much as the rest of the roles. He's a lot more less reliable defensively, but he overlaps the midfield this time. So he's genuinely bombing forward. Providing first-time crosses. This is another Javi Gallen. I have to give him another shout-out. Atletico Madrid's left-back. Full-back on automatic. Automatic, yeah. Full-back on automatic. Similar to the rest of the automatic roles. They will shift between the mentalities. Defend, support, attack on full-back. You need someone that's adequate in all areas. I am actually going to say someone like Kieran Tierney. He's on my screen right now, so why not? Look at this. He's got pace. He's got positioning and off the ball of 13, which is kind of the best of both worlds. That's decent. Passing of 12, which is very, very average. 14 dribbling, 15 crossing, and he's got 15 tackling. Mentally, he's a beast. This is someone that I believe could go automatic because you could vouch that he could play in all the different positions. Wing backs also come with defense, support, attack, and automatic roles. The difference between a wing back and a full back is. A wing back is much more naturally inclined to bomb forward. That's the difference. A full back is much more naturally inclined to stay deeper, do a bit more defensive duties, but a wing back is more likely going to dribble with the ball, go forward. They are usually going to get to the byline a lot more often than the full back. So, with the wing back on defend, the perfect example that I could give you is flipping Robertson from Liverpool, the left back, because he's got the stats of a wing back or a full back defend 13 positioning 15 tackling that's all right but then when it's time for him to cross the ball oh buddy yeah 16 crossing wing back defense cross from deep he doesn't even need to get to the byline he just makes that ball travel where he wants it to go to it's beautiful with the support duty you're meant to be providing angled through balls from out wide so who else but Trent Alexander-Arnold for the example? That guy is stepping onto the pitch with a flipping protractor and a calculator working out the different angles. The vision and passing of a midfielder playing out wide. With him supporting, he has to be prepared for running at his defender. But it's not compulsory right now. Because he's still on support, he can still use passing instead. He doesn't have to bomb forward with the ball. Unlike the wing back on attack. Wing back on attack is the only role where I think it's mandatory that you can dribble. Because what's the point of being a wing back on attack if the ball when you're dribbling looks like you've got two opposite magnets in your boots repelling the ball? It's just not working out well for you. And you need pace, I believe, and dribbling to pull this off. Because you're going to be overlapping the flanks, providing support. It actually says that you have to run at the man. You have to run at your man. How are you going to run at your man if you can't keep the ball at your feet? It's pointless. You, and, and also, you have to get to the byline. You will be getting to the byline a lot with wingback attacks. So my example is Akref Akimi because it's pace, undeniable pace, 20 pace, 17 off the ball. He's got 13 dribbling, 15 crossing. He is getting to that byline whether you like it or not. Wing back on automatic. And listen, it's never going to be perfect. You can never get someone that can defend, support and attack unless their name is, you know, Jose Gaia or something else. I don't know who else can do it really. David Alaba. It's, it's rare is what I'm trying to say. So you're going to have to be realistic. I'm telling you, man, I'm looking at the stats of Benjamin Mendy right now. He can do it, bruv telling you but it's up to you who do you think right now in real life is the best wide defender whether that be wing back full back inverted 
Who's the best at doing what they do? I could put a couple arguments forward right now. So I could say, I don't know, Kyle Walker might be up there. You could say Grimaldo for what he's doing at Leverkusen. He's giving a lot of problems, a lot of wahala. I'm seeing it. And those are the only two that I've got in my head. You can let me know who you think is the best right now. In terms of all time though, this is where I have to scratch my chin because I have no clue. In all, in all honesty, if I had to tell you the best left back that I think, or right back that I've ever seen in my life, Hector Bellerin. <laughs> Listen, if we're talking all time, it's probably going to be someone like Roberto Carlos, really. I found a couple more, like Marcelo, Real Madrid Marcelo, when he still had his legs, obviously. Uh, he was incredible. One of the most flary, disrespectful, audacious wingbacks I've ever seen. I've never seen Cafu play, but I'm seeing him on this list as well. Ashley Cole, I can vaguely remember. Someone like Cristiano Ronaldo came out saying that he hated playing against him. Maybe because Ashley Cole might have been a failed winger. Let's be honest, he might have been a failed winger because he's got the stature of a winger. You let me know if you recognise any of these names. Philip Lum. Uh, apparently Bayern Munich fullback. I don't know if it's right or left hand side. Danny Carver Howe in his prime. You could argue because he was there with Marcelo the whole time, but he's still playing for Real Madrid right now. It's impressive. A lot of longevity for some fullbacks. Recently, I saw a video on if you want to make it pro, they said your best bet because of competition is becoming a fullback. That's what they said. They said you're better off becoming a right back or a left back because the competition for other positions is so hard. It's such fine margins. You're better off doing something that no one else wants to do. That's the reality. Nobody really wants to be a fullback. Let's be honest, man. Ask Trent. Ask Trent, for example, if he wants to be a fullback. That's systematic, to be honest. But still, that's just a little example. Can I be real, yeah? You want me to turn into a fullback so I can get spun by the real wingers? It's not going to happen. There's only a select couple of fullbacks that really like defending. For example, I see on this list, Paolo Maldini was a fullback. I thought he was a centre-back. I don't know who to believe. I might have to actually ask someone because, yeah, if he was a fullback, then, yeah, apparently he was a defensive freak. In other footballing news, yeah, the legend that is Jurgen... Jurgen Klopp recently said how he plans on stepping down at the end of the season. And then we could all see that the main reason why he was stepping down was exhaustion. He's actually won the league and he's won the Champions League, battling it out every year with Pep Guardiola. So you can kind of understand where he's coming from. Football is a commitment and He's doing it again and again. You understand why he said, I just can't take this anymore. I need a break. He's clearly burnt out. It happens. But then what also surprised me, it's not even Klopp. It's the fact that Klopp has inspired Xavi to do the same thing. I think it's it's a matter of timing. It looks like Xavi has seen the response that Klopp got and was like, yeah, I think now's my time. I don't know, but yeah, with Xavi... He's saying, I just don't want things to go on like this. That's what he said. And I was just like, oh my God, you won the league recently. How have things gone so left? In such a short space of time, he's coming out saying how the team needs a change in dynamic. See, now this is the difference, yeah. Jurgen Klopp is not a Liverpool legend on the field as a player. He's a Liverpool legend as a manager. Xavi is a Barcelona legend on the pitch. He's a legend on the pitch. I don't think they'll give him the legendary status as a manager, but he did win the league, which is a massive achievement that I believe he should be building on. I don't think it's the same level of Klopp, where Klopp actually deserves a break. I don't think Xavi deserves a break. I don't think he's he's done it for long enough. I, I genuinely think he's, he's just seeing it as the easy way out. Um, and they're definitely not going to win the league this season. But as I was saying before, he said he wants a change in dynamic, but you're the manager. You're saying Barcelona need a change in dynamic. You're the manager. You need to be the one to give them that change in dynamic. You have to change your tactics. I don't even know if he's lost the dressing room, but you've already come out and given the white flag. I look at this as he's quitting. He's, he's surrendering to the pressure. That's what it looks like. 
He hasn't got the bollocks. That's what it looks like. Still, I don't even. I'm not even putting this one on the same level as Klopp, because Klopp was actually struggling at Liverpool at the beginning. Don't you remember? It took Klopp what four years at the beginning. It wasn't. It wasn't an overnight process for Jurgen. You know. Think about that. It wasn't an overnight process. You can learn a lot from this situation. Jurgen Klopp was there struggling with who, who did he have? That did he have? Did he have Daniel Sturridge? He had. He had a couple ridiculous. Ridiculously useless players. He had flipping Lorius Karius in the Champions League final. Name one other manager that can pull that off, bruv. It's not going to happen. So yeah, Jurgen Klopp is on a completely different level and we can understand why he is taking a break. It makes sense. But with Xavi, I think he's given up too early. That's how I look at it still. I don't really respect it. I don't respect his decision to step down. He needs to stick to his guns. Is anybody forcing him out of the club? Are the fans refusing to turn up to the stadium? Is the team in turmoil? Those are questions that I don't know. But what I do know is I think he needs to reevaluate his decision to step down and actually go for glory again. Is it a case of tactically he's been found out? Teams know how he plays, so now he said, all right, they know how I play, I'm going to leave now. If that's the case, yeah, that's a serious lack of mentality, man. No wonder the dressing room's probably falling apart if he's willing to quit over this. That's shocking. Sorry, Barcelona, but that is very bad. But anyway, anyway, anyway. This is just an example of Jurgen Klopp having flipping Origi coming off the bench changing games. And then we've got a guy that won the league within like his first, what, two or three seasons. I don't know how quick it won, took him to win the league, but he won it very quickly. And, and now he's giving up. <laughs> it's different, it's different. Yeah, maybe Barcelona's culture's different, but yeah. Anyway, I just had to get that off my chest because it was kind of bugging me a little bit. And yeah, that's the Dusty Podcast, episode two. So yeah, big up everybody. Let me know what you think as well. Uh, it is a new podcast, so thank you very much. Have a good day.